guys, I'm Kim Woody from Woody Artistry and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I had to continue the big cat series per your request and turn into an ocelot, so let's begin. I want to say a massive thank you to my featured patrons Bradley Shear and Dantastic. Thank you guys for always having my back in such a huge way. It means the world to me. Okay, moving on to the tutorial. I have an ocelot dra drawing already designed and I'm just kind of going off of that the whole time. So I am gluing down my eyebrows using Elmer's glue. It is a washable glue, so it will come out of the hairs. I have mixed up a muted yellow brown color that I'll be using primarily all over my face. Ocelots have like a yellowy orange, Kind of flavor to them with a little bit of brown so i just had all those colors mixed up i am mapping out the color areas that are going to be primarily that yellow brown and also white this is a really important step make sure you map out where the whites go because the whites will never be white completely when painting over another area or another color using a dark brown i am mapping out the brown areas of the ocelot as well so this is around the eyes, up on the eyebrows, around the mouth, and just periodically throughout the whole makeup I'll be using this brown as well. But I need to have the areas mapped out so we don't have um, muddying of the colors, especially since the yellows are really light, the whites are really light, and the ocelot has a lot of dark spots. The ocelot is actually one of like the prettiest creatures out there in my opinion. I discovered it when I was doing Big Cat's research. Um, they have like ridiculously large eyes, they're covered in beautiful spots and these like stripes too. So like they got the best of both worlds when it comes to their fur. Okay, now I'm starting to layer the colors. So as usual with my fur videos, I lay down a mid-tone color that I'm going to be building texture and color on top of. Color, our fur is never just one solid color. It is a mix of different versions of that color. So I'm laying down that mid-tone yellow everywhere, getting the white in. I'm using a detailed brush the whole time to create the texture of the fur. This is an important thing. You could take a bunch of shortcuts and like use a special fan brush or like whatever, but trust me, it doesn't look nearly as real or as correct. When you are using the detail brush for the little hairs, you need to make sure you keep in mind the length of the hair and the direction that the hair is growing naturally on the cat. So make sure you have a lot of reference photos and then you kind of have an idea of how you want to translate this to your face. Okay, ocelots have a bunch of cute little spots, so I'm adding those in between my eyebrows on my forehead. And uh, they have a bunch of big spots, but they usually get bigger the further away from the center of their face they are. Adding some brown to the lower part of my lip. I've also added it to the outsides of my nuzzle, my muzzle, and uh, around the white spots on my eyes. Add some spots to your chin and also your cheeks. Keep in mind the direction that the hair is going, so it's usually going outward and downward away from the eyes in the cheek area. Fill in the rest of the muzzle with white. Add some dots and adding more texture with the white. So once you have like the basic spots down for, or the locations down for the body paint colors, you wanna fan out the color with more and more little lines to make it look like it's, it's growing. It's underneath other layers of color. I am adding in that dark brown on the edges of my mouth. Ocelots have a very pronounced muzzle area and obviously I'm a human so I don't, so I'm trying to emphasize that by highlighting the muzzle and then creating shadows around it. Adding highlights to the fur is really important, so I added a lighter uh, yellow color all over my entire face, and then I'm also adding a darker brown color, and I'm going to be going back and forth between those colors to create the depth and dimension that hair has. It's always a variety of different hair colors. Like, just look at the hair on your head, you'd be like, oh, I'm blonde, but if you look at it, it's like this dark brown and this light yellow and it has a hint of orange or whatever so just look really closely at a high definition photo of the creature you're trying to transform into and do your best to mix um, colors to create that variation adding more texture with dark brown i'm going to be going back and forth back and forth between highlights shadows mid-tones um, and then on top of the brown areas and the spots I am adding black. It's black with brown, so it's not like a super jet black black, but their spots are black, so I'm adding in those dark colors into the stripes and areas. 
add some texture on my nose. And I'm adding more spots onto the side of my face. Ocelots have like stripes, weird tiny spots, but they also have things that look very reminiscent of like a cheetah spot or a leopard spot. So I decided to add one of those on the bare spot on my face since I don't have the weird concave thing that ocelots do. I just figured that would be a good thing to add something to that area because it looked really bland. Add some more highlights to your fur. And we're going to be on the edges of all of the dark spots and the light spots. You want to extend the fur over the edges of these different colors so it looks like it's not just separated into little patches. Adding more highlights all over the face with white. And also whenever you're adding over a color, especially with white, it will blend in with the color beneath it. All right, we're on to our little snoot. We're using pinks and grays and whites to create the nose. Now, typically when we've been painting these big cats, they have a muted uh, pink color, but ocelots are an exception. They have like a weirdly cartoony nose. So I'm using a very uh, bright pink to create the shape of the nose and adding whites to do highlights. And then they have gray spots all over their little nose. So I'm using gray mixed with a little bit of pink just to go around the edges of the nose and into the center. Ideally, if you had a prosthetic to better replicate their muzzle, I would recommend it, but like, I'm just doing illusions of body paint, so that's what I chose to do. Adding these spots to the muzzle, they have like the most adorable little faces. Oh my gosh, there's just so many beautiful textures, beautiful spots. So I'm adding those into the muzzle, making sure they get smaller the closer they get to the center. And they have a pretty dark spot underneath their eyes at the top of their muzzle, so I added that. Adding some more highlights onto the nose. I thought I overdid it a little bit on the gray dots, so I'm just kind of blending them in. And now to my ears. I want to match them to the rest of my face, so I'm painting them that mid-tone yellow color. And then on top of it, I am adding the mid-tone browns, slightly darker browns, slightly lighter, et cetera, et cetera. And then painting the tops black. Now the purpose of this is to make my ears kind of just blend in with the makeup and not be a focus of attention because I am going to be putting cat ears on the top of my head. All right, I put in the contacts and now it's time to paint the eyelids. So I'm painting them black and you have to wait for them to dry before you can open them back up again and then powder them with black eyeshadow. This will help prevent them from cracking. And as you've seen with sprays throughout like this whole makeup, I am spraying myself with MAC Fix Plus, which helps the body paint stay nice looking and also reduce in cracking. I put my hair up in a ponytail, up into a bun, and then covered the bun with a black fabric piece, which is a trick I use to make it look like it's gone and it blends into the black background. Then with my wool ears, I am attaching them to my head with bobby pins. And I've been doing this for all of my cat makeups now. It works like a charm. I made them using a technique called needle felting, which is usually made for like stuffed animals and stuff, but like I make cat ears and it works pretty good. I have a tutorial up on my TikTok if you wanna check it out. All right, extending the makeup onto my hair always makes it look so much better. So I'm painting my hair the same mid-tone color as my face and then dragging the stripes up and then adding spots over the sides and the top of the head. This is literally continuing the ocelot patterns that are present already on the photos of them, which was really fun because they have like the coolest fur. I'm serious, like spots, stripes, zigzags, weird patches, and then like squiggly massive little stripes. They're adorable, beautiful cats, I love them. All right, adding the black onto my lower lip, which is one of the last steps, so that's cool let it dry, and then added my teeth from Chaos Custom Fangs. These things are amazing and they always complete the look. I adore them and I adore this look. It's so freaking cute. Like, who doesn't want to be an ocelot? I'm scary, I'm adorable, I'm pretty, and I just love the fur pattern on this. So thank you guys very much for requesting this makeup. I've been adoring the uh, cat series. I'm thinking of doing Pabu, the fire ferret from uh, The Legend of Korra pretty soon. Also lots more uh, Halloween looks coming your way. And please follow me on TikTok if you wanna see uh, videos ahead of time and join me on Patreon if you want all behind the scenes. Thanks guys. 
I wanted to take a quick moment out of your YouTubing to say a very big thank you for sticking to the end of this video. As you may know, these take quite a long time to make, both the makeup and the video, so it really means a lot that you just watch and subscribe and come back and comment and things and just generally support me. But in a very special note, I wanted to say thank you very much to my wonderful Patreon producers. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to get my catnip or my um, plush pheasants, so thank you very much for funding what I do. I greatly appreciate it. Mwah, ciao, I will see you in the next film. <laughs>